You can feel sad, scared, angry. It's your brain that's sad, that's an anxiety. Depression, it's not just like sadness, it's like a lot of things, it's stress and tiredness. You could be stressed for like not really a good reason, you're just like overwhelming yourself. Hello friends of all shapes and sizes. Today, I'm glad you could join me as we discuss a not so comfortable subject, childhood depression. I'll begin by thanking the Oregonian for that great video where children are able to explain themselves how they experience anxiety and depression. While many of us are familiar with what depression looks like as an adult, the same symptoms aren't always present in children. Because many children have difficulties regulating and expressing their emotions in a healthy manner, childhood depression may not always present in the similar manner as adult depression. Today we are going to look at the case of an exceptional child, and that is Lisa Simpson. There's a better than not chance that if you are alive and watching this video, you've heard of The Simpsons, the longest running animated sitcom in American history. One of the earliest examples of examining Lisa and who she is on a personal level comes in season one with the episode Moaning Lisa. From the very beginning, we see as she's in the bathroom getting ready for her day that she isn't as interested in taking care of herself like she usually is. She doesn't seem to want to brush her teeth. She stares at the mirror aimlessly and she leaves the bathroom seemingly with no energy left in her. Upon arriving downstairs, she doesn't even seem interested in eating her breakfast. And on top of that, as the family is beginning to leave, getting ready for their respective days, Marge presents them with a conundrum. I'm sorry, everybody, but I've only got two cupcakes for the three of you. Well, Mom, one of us has scarfed down more than enough cupcakes over the past three decades to keep it- Bart! Just take mine. A simple cupcake will bring me no pleasure. For those watching this episode for the first time, if you didn't notice Lisa's melancholy in the beginning in the bathroom, you certainly had this cupcake conundrum stand out. As we all know, to this day, but especially when we were kids, sugary treats are amazing. And for children, having a sugary snack, especially in your lunch, can be the highlight of the day. So for Lisa, even though she is certainly a beyond her age child, for her to turn this away is shocking and is a huge hint at something larger going on that we will discuss. We cut to Lisa in band practice where while playing My Country Tis of Thee, she tries to throw a bit of pizzazz in. However, upon noticing that she is off script, she is reprimanded by her band instructor. Lisa Simpson! Lisa, there's no room for crazy bebop in My Country Tis of Thee. But Mr. Largo, that's what my country is all about. What? I'm wailing out for the homeless family living out of its car, the Iowa farmer whose land has been taken away by unfeeling bureaucrats, the West Virginia coal miner coughing... Well, that's all fine and good, but Lisa, none of those unpleasant people are going to beat the recital next week. This is a very common response for children displaying atypical signs of depression. Lisa simply trying to add a bit of her own creativity and explore her passion of music is reprimanded and told that she should not do that. She is told to stuff that creativity down inside herself and to stick to the lines. This happens constantly with children all across the world and only enforces the idea that they should not be outward with their emotions and should instead stuff it all inside. Just some numbers for you. In the United States, 4.4% of children ages 3 to 17 have been formally diagnosed with depression. General behavioral problems, which can be early indicators of many mental health issues, are seen within 8.9% of US children, which is roughly 5.5 million individuals. Though anxiety and ADHD are more prevalent than depression in children, these symptoms coincide a lot of the time with 73.8% of children with depression also displaying anxiety and 47.2% of children also displaying general behavioral problems. Cut forward to Lisa in gym class and she is getting absolutely peppered with dodgeballs, so much so that the gym teacher whistles and calls for a pause. She then proceeds to ask Lisa, why isn't she dodging the balls? It's dodgeball. Which Lisa then explains that she is simply too sad to dodge the balls. Now, what does her gym teacher say? Does she take her out of class for the day? Does she, you know, let her go speak to the guidance counselor? No, she says, you can't be too sad to play dodgeball. And then proceeds to have all the kids culminate their peppering once again even worse than before she had whistled class to us halt. I cannot reiterate enough that these sort of interactions are common in children who display early signs of mental health issues, and these reprimandings 
only serve to reinforce their idea that you should not share these emotions and that you should deal with them yourself alone. Arriving home from her, what I can only imagine, long day, Lisa has a note from Principal Skinner for her parents explaining that she was too sad to play dodgeball. Homer, loving but gullible as he is, responds that, well, she doesn't look too sad. This again harkens back to children not displaying the same signs of depression that adults do. While an adult may very visibly be sad, be experiencing melancholy, children, due to their inability to express emotions in a healthy manner, may not present the same way. Eventually, Lisa is driven upstairs by her parents where she seeks refuge in her saxophone, which is, once again, reprimanded by Homer for making too much noise. After a brief conversation with her father, Lisa returns to simple fingering with her saxophone, to which she is met with the sound of a saxophone. Now, as you can imagine, this calls upon Lisa's inner musician and draws her out into the night where she finds none other than Bleeding Gums Murphy. Now, quick sidebar, I wanna just talk about a flashback that Marge has to her childhood where while she is sad, her mother explains to her that she should put on a big smile because a smile tells the world how great of a mother she has and doesn't she want to show the world how great her mom is? I think this is just a really great example how older generations had it arguably worse when it came to displaying negative emotions. A lot of the time they were, again, just told to cover it up, put a smile on, and go about their day. Back to Bleeding Gums Murphy, who is a loose depiction of Sonny Rollins, a musician known for playing his practicing, his saxophone on the bridge, I want to focus more so on Lisa's um, experience with depression and not so much on the blues and the jazz as there's an entire discussion to be had there that we could talk about another time. Um, Bleeding Gums Murphy makes a few more appearances throughout the series of The Simpsons, and I think just looking at this episode would do him a disservice. So again, I just want to focus on Lisa and her experience. However, in their sharing of music, Lisa is able to finally vent some of her true feelings. Bleeding Gums Murphy takes the saxophone while Lisa lets out some of her innermost feelings. I got a bratty brother. He bugs me every day. And this morning, my own mother cupcake away. My dad acts like he belongs. He belongs in the zoo. I'm the saddest kid in grade number two. Before Lisa is pulled away from the situation by Marge, we can see what is more or less art therapy and how it can help individuals express their emotions. What is art therapy? Art therapy allows children to explore their emotions through creative means such as drawing, painting, crafting, building, things that don't require verbalization and let the child's inner mind sort of explain how they're feeling. When being interviewed on the subject, Mary Grace Baburin, the director of New York University's art therapy program, was asked how these images help children understand and communicate their experiences. A little ways into her answer, she gives what I think is a powerful and encompassing explanation of how art therapy can be helpful, where she says, I vividly recall my observations of children after the events of 9-11. Art was often the only way these children could make sense of the insensible. Now, while it is difficult to put exact numbers and percentages on the impact art therapy can have on an individual child, there is near consensus opinion that it is helpful and can help them regulate and express their emotions. Back to The Simpsons, we have what becomes one of their most famous scenes to this day, where Marge tries to drop Lisa off and insist to put on a big smile and cover up that sadness and just, you know, be be happy. Just let people around her know that she's okay. As Lisa walks to class and meets not only her band instructor, but some of the other students, Marge quickly sees how this fake smile functions as a form of compliance and almost allows them to take advantage of her. As you can imagine, as any good mother would in this situation, this enrages her and she quickly whips the car around to which she grabs Lisa, puts her back in the car, and begins on what is now arguably one of the Simpsons' most famous scenes. Lisa, I apologize to you. I was wrong. I take it all back. Always be yourself. You want to be sad, honey? Be sad. We'll write it out with you. And when you get finished feeling sad, we'll still be there. What Marge says here is powerful, it's applicable, and I think it's something that a lot of parents would be better off if they understood. 
More or less, Marge explains to Lisa that she can just be sad. She doesn't have to put on any sort of show for anybody. She doesn't have to, you know, try to convince anybody of anything. If she's sad, just let her be sad. Let her experience those emotions in a healthy way because that's how we have to get through them. You can't just shove everything back down. We need to cry, we need to vent, we need to get these emotions out so that we may heal and move past them. I think this was a fantastic way to end the episode because it not only shows the growth in Lisa, but in Marge herself and her understanding of her daughter. If you're interested in any of the information I discussed today, I will be leaving links to the CDC, WebMD, and other resources that I used in the description below. Let me know what you thought of this episode. Please comment, like, subscribe. Um, as you can tell, I brought everything in. Uh, I probably won't be doing this every episode. I wanted to be a bit softer for the discussion, but you know, if you liked what you saw, please, again, let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for your time today. Ah, I always do that. And as always, my name is Zachary Taylor. Thank you for your time today.